Hello everyone, Douglas here, and welcome to my classic Doctor Who review, and today I will be reviewing The Sensorites. And this is another story I have not seen before. This story is the penultimate story for season 1, and this story is the only one to be written by Peter R. Newman, and this story is directed by two directors. Episodes 1 to 4 are directed by Doctor Who associate producer Mervyn Penfield, and episodes 5 to 6 are directed by Frank Cox. In episode 1, called Strangers in Space, we start off where we left off from the Aztecs, and we see the first Doctor, played by William Hutnell, Ian, played by William Russell, and Barbara, played by Jacqueline Hale, and the TARDIS instruments are not acting right. We see the scanner is not working, and we see Susan, played by Carol Ann Ford, and she suggests that they go out, and the Doctor wants to figure out what is going on. I like the doctor's line when he says, It all started out as a mild curiosity in a junkyard, and now it's turned out to be quite a great spirit of adventure. And when you look at the last seven stories, they have changed. We see the doctor and his companions leave the TARDIS, and they are on a spaceship, and one of the crew members are dead. We find out that... The crew member moved, and he is still alive. So, it turns out, they weren't dead, they were in suspended animation. We find out that the Doctor and his companions are in danger. We find out that they can't leave because the Central Whites have a hold of their ship. We see a hand, and they remove the TARDIS lock and they can't get back into the TARDIS. We see the ship moved, and see the sense field. We see they got away from the sense field. We see Barbara and Susan open a door to get water, and we see a human hand closes the door, and we see John, played by Stephen Dotsnell. We find out Barbara and Susan are in danger. We hear a high-pitched whining noise, and it's the Sensorites. At the end of Episode 1, we see a Sensorite. In Episode 2, called The Unwilling Warriors, we see Midland and Carol are frozen. We find out that something is talking to John inside his mind. We find out the Sensorites are on the ship. We see Barbara and Susan are thinking the same and mentally attack the Sensorites. We see Ian and Barbara meet the Sensorites. We see the Sensorites are communicating through Susan and they want to talk. Another good doctor line when he says, I don't make threats, but I do keep promises, and I promise you, I shall cause more trouble than you bargain for. We find out that Susan is going down to the sense field, or they will all be killed, and that is the end of episode 2. In episode 3, called Hidden Danger, we see the Doctor refuses to have Susan go down to their planet, and the Doctor turns off the lights to blind them because they are the opposite of a cat. We see the Doctor is mad with Susan, and... I actually like this because Susan is growing up in this story. We find out that the Sensorites are dying from some sort of virus. We see the Doctor, Susan, Ian, Carol, and John have arrived on the planet. We do see some Sensorites are good and some are bad. At the end of Episode 3, Ian gets sick and collapses and we find out he is dying. In episode 4, called A Race Against Death, we find out from the doctor that this isn't a disease that Ian has, he was poisoned. 
we find out that the doctor discovers the cure and it's Dr. Pepper. Oh, wait a minute, it's Caffeine Catrate. At the end of episode 4, we find out the doctor discovers the poison and we hear a monster. In episode 5, called Kidnap, we see Susan and Ian find the doctor, but he is knocked out. The doctor discovers that there is a sensorite working against him. We see two sensorites come in and they blame the death of the second elder on the doctor, but it fails. We see John is better. John remembers that one of the sensorites had a plot. Susan finds out that the city administrator, who became the second elder, is the enemy. At the end of episode 5, we see Carol gets kidnapped. In episode 6, called A Desperate Venture, we find out who kidnapped Carol, and it's the second elder. We see Susan got the letter, and Susan suspects something. We see a man attacks Ian, and the doctor thinks it's one of the survivors. We see Ian and Barbara say goodbye to the first elder, and that is the end. I will say this. It's a weak story, but at the same time, I found it to be quite enjoyable and interesting at the same time. I found out why Mervyn Penfield directed this story, and according to Wiki, as it was felt that he could evoke great visual atmosphere despite a small budget, while Frank Cox directed the final two episodes. I will admit, the sensor rights are very interesting. I have to say something about Susan, and Susan is very good in this story, and she is growing up in this story, and that is foreshadowing her last story, which we will get there soon. Cast is good, I like William Hotner in this story, and he is really funny and sarcastic in this story. The script by Peter R. Newman is good, and the direction by Mervyn Penfield and Frank Cox is good, and I would be in the middle by giving this story a 5 out of 10. So, that is my review on the Centralites. Um, before we do wrap up, I do got an announcement to make. Um, I'm not sure to my audience and my subscribers if you know a channel called Seven Best Things, and the host of that channel is hosted by my dad. And I want to tell you all this, that I will be appearing on 7 Best Things, and we are going to be counting down our 7 Best Songs of the Alan Parsons Project. I don't know when that video will come out, but make sure you subscribe to 7 Best Things, and check out that video whenever that's coming out. So, another thing I gotta say is, also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and if there is a classic Doctor Who story you want me to review next, leave it in the comments, and I will see you all next time.